Thank you. Um, today I'm going to share with you some of our um, exciting progress and challenges um, in the allotopic expression as a strategy to remedy mitochondrial DNA mutations. Uh, this research program is one of the in-house programs at Sense Research Foundation um, at, in Mountain View, California. Um, now, several speakers before me have emphasized the um, importance of um, uh, oxidative stress um, in, in, uh, and, and the, role of, uh, uh, the role of oxidative stress and uh, its origins from the mitochondria. Uh, so that makes my introduction a little more easier. However, I want to emphasize some, a few uh, points uh, about the organelle itself. Um, this is the only organelle in the eukaryotic cell uh, that has its own DNA. It comes with uh, 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 a double-stranded circular DNA. In humans, it's about 16.5 kilobase pairs uh, long, and it encodes for um, 13 important protein uh, genes that are the uh, genes that encode 13 important proteins that are all part of the oxidative phosphorylation assembly. Um, now, this slide probably um, captures what, what, what really happens here. You have an organelle that is responsible for producing more than 90% of your energy demand, but at the same time, the side products that it produces, that is uh, free radicals or re um, uh, reactive oxygen species, is in close proximity to the DNA um, that, that produces um, the vital subunits of the Oxfos relay. Um, so it's, it's close proximity to this oxidative stress, uh, replicative errors over, over time, and uh, inefficient repair mechanisms in the organelle itself predispose um, accumulation of mutations over time. Um, so how, how does this reflect? Um, this reflects as several mitochondrial diseases, um, and, and uh, about 500,000 people are diagnosed with mtDNA diseases worldwide. However, this uh, statistic is uh, very um, underreported in the sense that it is believed almost one in 2,000 humans are born with some kind of mitochondrial DNA defect. Um, so how, how does it manifest in people? Um, here is an example of a person with mitochondrial uh, uh, DNA, um, um, mutation in the mitochondrial DNA. Um, it often uh, manifests as uh, speech impediment, farce, um, vision impairment, balance, muscle weakness, cardiac uh, hypertrophy in the sense that any, it can, it can, uh, any organ that has a high um, uh, energy demand is affected. Now, just to give you, under clinical terms, what are the indications? Uh, you might have heard many of these acronyms, uh, LON, MILA, SMURF, um, um, KSS. Uh, these are all due to specific Point, some of them are point mutations to certain genes in these 13 proteins. Some of them, such as KSS, kern sayer syndrome, is larger deletion uh, of, of the mitochondrial DNA itself. So now these are the uh, diseases caused due to primary mutations in the mitochondrial DNA. However, there is a larger impact that when you have dysfunctional mitochondria because of oxidative stress, um, uh, it can. It, it has already be also been implicated in Alzheimer's disease, uh, Parkinson's disease, and even in diabetes. So, what what is our strategy? Uh, we just heard our previous uh, um, speaker say antioxidants do only so much. They they only address the symptoms. They they cannot address the root cause. We've taken a gene therapy approach to um, address this situation in the sense that we, will, we want to develop optimal conditions to express functional mtDNA genes from the nucleus or allotopic expression. What, what did, uh, 
Primarily what this would involve is that due to different evolutionary origins of the nuclear DNA and uh, a bacterial or a prokaryotic DNA uh, in the mitochondria, there are some uh, codon usage differences. Of course, you would have to correct that. That is, that is a must. Otherwise, you're not going to get any productive translation in the cytosol. But what we did is that we went one step ahead and we, um, we did codon optimization to facilitate it, to exp uh, expression. I'll come back to the codon optimization part uh, later. Um, in addition to just this minimal codon correction, they also need uh, some kind of a targeting sequence or a zip code to tell them where to go in the mitochondria. So although we have uh, done some studies on this for this talk, I will, um, uh, I will restrict uh, in the sense that uh, we appended the ATP5G1 MTS in front of all our uh, allotopic expression constructs. Uh, this is uh, a, a nuclear encoded complex five um, protein, uh, and uh, of course it assembles in, in, in the complex five. Um, and a third feature is um, the um, migration, of, of course the mitochondrial proteome is uh, about 1400 proteins, uh, of which Barring just those 13 proteins, most of them are synthesized in the nucleus, they are synthesized in the site, uh, they are translated in the cytosol, and then they end up in the mitochondria in different locations. So migration of these 1400 genes likely involved uh, acquisition of various five prime and three prime um, characteristics uh, to, to facilitate expression. But what I'm going to, um, um, I tell you is how we have uh, devised uh, a platform to test some of these uh, features by expressing these allotopic genes in a safe harbor locus in the nucleus. Um, what is code on optimization? Um, this has been commonly used in, in the industry to improve enzyme protein production or even in vaccines. But um, and several companies offer this technology. I'm not going to say we are expert in this. Uh, I don't have any bioinformatics background. But some of the features are very logical. Like, you know, it, it prevents, um, um, uh, uh, you know, it, it controls the GC content. It, it prevents uh, DNA methylation. It, it optimizes mRNA secondary structure, everything. But I want you to focus only on the first uh, uh, point that is codon usage bias. Um, what, this, uh, what this does is that um, uh, it, it, opt it optimizes for nuclear translation with respect to tRNA abundance and uh, it also avoids any rare codon usage. Um, this would only seem logical because you're trying to put uh, a, a, a prokaryotic gene in, in, the new, uh, in the eukaryotic environment, but I have to tell you that although the allotopic concept has been around for over 20 years, almost all the studies use only the minimally recorded uh, version to, to express. So what did we do? We synthesized two versions of these uh, 13 genes, uh, the minimally recorded version and the codon optimized version, and we uh, transfected in uh, 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 HEK293 cells. What you will see here is that the left side is the minimally recorded one, and uh, the right side is the codon optimized one. Practically all 13 codon optimized genes can be expressed under transient conditions in HEK293 cells. There are some of them, such as ND3 um, and COX-1, ATP8, are expressed under recorded conditions, but not nearly, uh, um, you know, uh, equivalent to the codon optimized version. Um, well, I have to point out here that we were unable to synthesize the recorded version for ND6. This gene had an unusually high content of GC content, and in spite of trying three different companies, we were unable to synthesize the recorded version. However, we were able to synthesize the codon-optimized version, and that's, that worked uh, to a certain extent. It's all good. Does all 13 proteins are expressed transiently. Uh, of, it should, to put it to any use, it has to express under stable conditions in, in clinical conditions. So 
we selected all 25 lines um, uh, for four weeks on puromycin. Um, and uh, not all of them are stably expressed, uh, but many of the complex one genes, um, uh, ND1, ND2, ND3, ND4L are all stably uh, expressed. Um, and COX-2 from complex 4 and ATP-8 from uh, complex 5 are also stably, robustly produced. Just to mirror this, we, we, we compared the mRNA levels in all the 25 lines. Um, you can see that the mRNA abundance for the colon optimized versions are manifold higher than their recorded counterparts. Um, so, all this is just in wild-type cells. How, how would this technology fare in a, a disease model? So we tested our um, constructs um, in, um, in, these are patient-derived uh, mitochondrial mutant cell line. This particular cell line has um, a, 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 a mutation uh, at, at the uh, 8529 position. It, it changes from a G to an A, uh, what this does is that it prematurely uh, truncates the ATP8 protein. Um, if you see uh, in, in control cells, uh, you get the ATP8 protein. In this mutant cell line, it's practically absent. Now, there are two regions in the mitochondrial DNA uh, that are bisystronic. One is the ATP8 and ATP6 region, and the other one is the ND4 and ND4L region. So this mutation, unfortunately, happens to be in the overlap region between the ATP8 and ATP6. What we found is that um, the ATP6 protein levels are also significantly down in this cell line. But by mass spectroscopy, we, we, um, we were able to confirm that there is uh, about 9% residual protein in this cell line. So we used, um, we, co-expressed the ATP8 protein and the ATP6 protein in, in this cell line. Now, this is published, actually, so I'm not going to go into the details of all the, function, uh, all the functional characterization that we did. Uh, just to summarize, what this does is, yes, it is stably expressed. Um, it, uh, in these mutant cell line, complex 5 is completely um, disintegrated. So when we put back both these proteins, we were able to restore complex 5 assembly. Several of the uh, other complexes were either um, um, uh, lowered or, or um, uh, disassembled. We were able to bring back m m most of the complexes back. Um, and it also brings back ATPase activity, uh, which we did by two different methods. One is an INGEL activity assay, and the other one is the quantitative spectroscopic uh, PKLDH assay. But I will tell you one important, uh, um, ATP, the, the recovery of ATP synthase activity, that is, now these cells are able to respire aerobically. They are able to use oxygen and, and produce ATP. Uh, so this is Seahorse data, uh, which we did in the brand lab. Um, if you see the mutants, uh, this, this is the um, glycolytic uh, uh, activity in these cells. Um, the mutant cells have a very high glycolytic activity. Um, and this is the wild type uh, one, which has uh, uh, lower glycolytic activity. Now, when we put both the genes, uh, ATP6 and ATP8, uh, the double rescue cells uh, almost retain um, wild-type levels. Uh, on the right side is oxygen consumption. Similarly, um, you know, the, the red one is uh, wild-type wild, wild cells, and the orange one is for the double rescue. So just to say that we were, and of course, the double rescue cells were now able to grow on galactose media uh, that forces oxidative phosphorylation, and they are much more viable in galactose media. Okay, all the, this, this part was already published. Um, now, there is a little thing. Um, of these two constructs, uh, we 
Retrospectively, we, we realized that the ATP8 construct was codon optimized. We, had, we received this ATP6 from a different lab and we were trying with this construct. If you see the expression difference between the ATP8 and ATP6 gene, you can see uh, the, the level of expression that we obtained. On the right side is a schematic for how the F1, F0 complex assembles. Uh, you, um, you know, you need both ATP8 and ATP6 um, for, for the entire monomer assembly, and uh, two of these monomers come together to, to uh, efficiently produce ATP. Now, we knew that this cell line may not be the model system to test ATP6 uh, deficiency because it's not a completely null model for the ATP6 protein. So we obtained another um, a, a, a mutant cell line that is specific for um, the A6 gene. Uh, uh, this particular mutation changes the start codon of ATP6 uh, from, a, from a methanin to a threonine. Of these, um, uh, Bhavna did most of these studies and it took a lot of effort for us to get them to be homoplasmic to make sure that we, um, we had the right uh, cell line uh, so that any endogenous ATP6 will not confound our, our strategy per se. But when we put our optimized ATP6, what we observed was that we were able to regain partly some of complex five, we were able to regain some of uh, uh, complex three, the disassembled complex three, but these were not viable on galactose. So it's only to say that, yes, codon optimization is a start to, to, um, uh, all, to allotopically express all these genes, but some of the genes will require more engineering. To, the, to, to stress the fact that um, all these 13 proteins are very hydrophobic proteins, uh, and they, are, they span the uh, lipid um, inner membrane multiple times, and so uh, we, we may have to re-engineer uh, ATP6 uh, towards that. Now I'm going to show some, that was a little disappointing, but I'm going to show some positive data for another cell line. This is an ND1 uh, patient cell line. This is again a patient cell line we obtained from the uh, Trounce lab uh, in, uh, in Australia. And this is again a truncation mutant in that the protein is completely absent um, and a complex one is completely absent in these cells. Again, we stably transfected both this time, uh, the recorded version for ND1 and the optimized version for N, uh, ND1. And at the mRNA level, we saw significant uh, differences. The optimized uh, mRNA is significantly higher. The protein is stably produced. Uh, what this also does is it brings back in gel complex one activity. I will not go too much into the details. Uh, Caitlin has um, a, a presentation in the afternoon, so I encourage you to all uh, listen to her talk. She will talk about how we address the codon optimization angle for all of complex one genes. Now, how useful is the strategy if we cannot demonstrate in, in animal models? So um, we... Uh, ATP8 is one of the few genes that we were able to get an animal model. This is not a perfect model. It's not a null model, but these are called the FVB mice. Um, they have a, a substitution mutation in the ATP8 gene. Um, these uh, mice have lowered ATP content in them. So we obtained these um, uh, cybrid cell lines from... Uh, um, Dr. Ibrahim Saleh. Um, so the FVB mice has other mutations in the nuclear genome as well, but Dr. Uh, Saleh has uh, generated a conplastic mouse separating these two mutation phenotypes uh, So they, by several backcrossing with wild-type mouse. So the mutation is confined only to the mitochondrial genome. So what we can do, we can definitely express the mouse codon optimized. You can see the difference between recoded and codon optimized mouse ATP8. We can express them stably in these cells. They incorporate into complex five, and they also um, uh, restore viability on galactose media. So to, to go into animal models, we have initiated this project. I, I don't have... Uh, 
data for it, but we are doing it through a contract service uh, agency. Applied stem cells is, uh, do, uh, is uh, um, uh, doing this for us. We will be using the maximum modifiable mouse um, uh, developed by um, Dr. Ruby Chensai. Uh, I believe she's going to talk in the afternoon as well. So the idea is to put these allotopic constructs in a, a, a specific location in the nuclear genome um, in a, a safe harbor locus um, and, te and then uh, test their expression. So first what we will do is um, we will put the ATP8 gene in the wild type maximum modifiable mouse and because of the um, uh, genetics, um, mitochondrial inheritance genetics, we will cross uh, male, um, um, male mice with, with the ATP8 gene in the nuclear genome with female FVB mouse and recapitulate the um, mutant phenotype in them and then assess uh, thereby. Um, so like I said, these, uh, it is ongoing. We have started it a few months back and uh, we are very excited to see how this will pan out. I, I, I mentioned that, yes, ATP6 gene doesn't work as well um, as we expected. So what we are trying to do now is that we are trying to develop a platform um, uh, in the lab where we can test different parameters like promoters or uh, RNA binding uh, at the three prime end, um, uh, various other uh, modifications to the gene itself. All this um, would be possible only if we can compare them under um, identical conditions. So we, um, uh, this strategy, uh, the DICE strategy was uh, originally um, developed by the Kalos lab at Stanford. Uh, we are essentially using their strategy in that we will place um, recognition sites for um, uh, two uh, integrases, in, in this case, uh, the 5C31 and BXB1 sites in the H11 locus uh, in the nucleus. Uh, we introduced this through talents, and then we will uh, switch for the donor constructs in them using uh, our donor constructs and the integrases. Um, Carter is uh, a postdoc fellow, um, uh, uh, he, uh, and uh, he has been uh, working on this uh, project. Um, I have to say he took over from another sense intern last year. She was trying to uh, develop this, and and I'm happy to say, happy to say that uh, I can. This these results came like a week before uh, the conference, so I'm very happy to share this with you all. Uh, so of course this is just a reporter gene. So all of them, the, the when we put the landing pad that has a GFP in it. So we begin with. Uh, completely green cells, and we put either a reporter uh, construct, or we replace the reporter construct with the OATP8 construct, or with reporter plus OATP8. Now, the, the Western blot is just for the second uh, reaction, that is when we replaced uh, the reporter for OATP8, and these are mitochondrial purified fractions, and it says that we, we, we can express uh, at least ATP8 from the safe harbor uh, locus. Uh, this will be a great um, tool for us to test now various allotopic constructs that we can design and test. Um, so um, in summary, what I would like to um, leave you with is that um, our hypothesis that codon optimization is um, a prerequisite for allotopic expression. However, that may not be uh, um, sufficient. We may have to engineer, uh, at least for the uh, more hydrophobic genes, the additional engineering might, might be needed to uh, get functional uh, recovery. Uh, of course, all of this wouldn't be possible without a great team. Uh, I want to say that all, Caitlin, Bhavna, and Carter, they all have posters, so please go and visit their posters. Um, and um, I, would, I would like to give a shout out to lifespan.io. Um, so we, um, they, they uh, did some, uh, they, they did a crowd uh, sourcing for us uh, a, a couple of years ago for uh, the allotopic expression for the ATP8 and ATP6 genes. Uh, we are launching one more uh, very soon. So I would um, 
I'd like you to visit the site, share. Uh, yeah. uh, with that, I'll be happy to take any questions. Thank you very much, uh, very much for your talk. Uh, I really like your approach, and my question may be rather technical, but anyway, uh, um, I'm not a big specialist, but uh, recently I, uh, I have read, uh, I have seen a paper about uh, RNA import methods uh, yes. into mit mitochondria, yes. so maybe uh, yes. Did you consider the possibility of using? Well, we have tried this approach. Uh, so it, the the RP mediated. There are there are um, uh, this this technique uh, was reported uh, a few years ago. It yeah, came yeah. from the title lab, and and we in fact tried to mimic it. It did not work in our hands. Uh, uh, the, our uh, understanding is that it is uh, it will it's it might be possible to import small RNA molecules, but for uh, uh, proteins that are 52 kilodaltons or 40 kilodaltons, it's, it's almost impossible. Thank you very much. Hello, here? Yes. Uh, hello, thanks, great talk. I have two questions. One, it's technical. Um, so the transcriptional regulation in mitochondria, it's very <laughs> different compared to the nuclear one. Yeah. So my question is, which kind of promoter and uh, transcriptional regulator are you using? Yes. And the second one is more uh, high level. Uh, what could be the benefit of this strategy compared to a CRISPR-Cas9 mediated uh, uh, correction of the gene mutation? Okay, yes. So people are trying. I'm, I'm, I, it's, if you step back and see, you have two copies of a nuclear gene, whereas you have uh, maybe five to 10 copies of mitochondrial DNA per mitochondrion, and then you have depending on the energy load, anywhere from thousands of mitochondria. So essentially, you're trying to modify 5,000 copies of mitochondrial DNA mutation per cell. And the CRISPR technology, uh, you know, it's not quite there to get that huge um, enzyme into mitochondria. Now, I, I, I'm not saying it may not be possible, but at least that strategy is not there. And what was your second question? Uh, the transcription, okay, so all these uh, studies, uh, we did it under um, uh, a PCMV promoter. Uh, they are all uh, on a plasmid uh, with a PCMV promoter. But that, uh, to exactly address your question is why we developed the safe harbor protocol. Uh, like, you know, we will be able to test endogenous promoters, um, not a viral promoter or something, and then drive the uh, expression of these genes. So my question, I know that uh, cells, they can uh, take uh, mito uh, mitochondria that you inject, uh, say, in a bloodstream or deliver in other ways. Yeah. So my question is, uh, what is the advantage of your strategy comparing to just like to production of uh, healthy mitochondria and delivering them to cells? And can they, those two strategies used interchangeably, like you modified some genes and you also deliver uh, healthy mitochondria from outside? Yes, it is. Uh, there are strategies available, like, you know, um, they modify the mitochondria with PEP1 mediated, peptide mediated. It is possible. But how would you get it into, uh, let's say, a uh, whole body? Um, that, that, that would be uh, a problem, that is challenging. So here, um, you know, with advances in nuclear gene therapy, of course it's very dependent on nuclear gene therapy, but there is an added uh, challenge that you have to engineer these genes with any appreciable expression before we can go to nuclear gene therapy itself. Yeah. Okay, one last question. Two last questions, uh, but very short. No, one. First of all, uh, when do you expect to go to the clinic? And second, can this approach be used as exercise enhancing? Exercise enhancing, I'm, I'm not quite sure. I, I, all I can tell is that if you are able to transfer the genes to the nucleus, um, you might have more uh, healthy mitochondria, um, but 
Clinical trials, yes, once we can establish this in animal models, uh, and that's our goal. There are three clinical trials already underway, but they are all for the ND4 gene, and they all use just the recorded version. Um, but it's used, uh, so uh, we believe that we, we, we will have a better technology, and, uh, and that's our goal too, yeah. Okay, thank you very much, wonderful. Yeah.